So I'm just filming a little video here on the 1.4 TSI EA111 Volkswagen Audi engine. The issue we're going to be looking at today is with the intake air regulating flap. I have a used item which is a faulty item here and what we'll be looking at, this is an update video, um, I have done a video on this uh, before, this was uh, way back in the early um, part of my YouTube um, appearances and um, it wasn't say as detailed as it could be so I, just from a few requests from commenters we're going to do a little update. Now this code that we tend to get is a P10 a4 uh, so yeah that's the code we're getting if you read it on vcds you will actually see it um, as being called uh, an intake air regulating flap um, the correct numbers i believe for it is a um, v380 and a j808 which are all internal in this actual unit as we can see here um, there we've got the part number there 03C128063 A. Like I say, this is a defective item, one that I replaced on a Golf 6 1.4 TSI. And the engine codes we're looking at here specifically is the CAV uh, variants. So CAVD, CAVE, and CAVG, as far as I'm aware. Now, it might also apply to uh, the later, I think it's a CTM or something like that. Um, the updated version of this engine looks pretty much exactly the same though um, But yeah, and as we can see the installation position on this vehicle was actually here um, People I've seen in the past have actually made the wrong assumption that when it says the intake regulating flap They're actually return the, the full code is actually referring to the throttle body itself Simply because they're not understanding of the system. So if we actually look around the system, we can see this has actually got an aftermarket um, air intake on this well, this is our air intake our air cleaner coming in across the top here and then running down and into our turbocharger which is under this heat shield we can just see the compressor housing through the vent here so the supercharger is actually down the back of the engine and driven by the water pump with a clutched pulley down here so what we've actually got if we look on this intake here is we have another pipe that runs down to the supercharger and then another pipe where can we see it? Another pipe here, just under here, that runs back up into this pipe. So as you can see, it's going down into the supercharger and back out the supercharger, each side of this flap. So that what the engine ECU does is when the supercharger is being driven, it closes this flap, so then all air is being drawn through the supercharger and then up, so it's an intake air bypass flap. So it's basically, regulating where the, where the air is being being drawn to once we get to that 3000 rpm stage and the changeover where the turbo is now spooled enough to uh, to take over and we're going to open our clutch up around the same sort of time on our uh, supercharger drive this is going to be open obviously this is all done with software and you won't even feel that the changeover the same with the, the clutch on the uh, water pump but that is what's happening at 3000 rpm the clutch is then disengaging the supercharger the flap is opening so the, the actual point of this flap sitting in here i believe this way around if we take this engine cover off just to give us a bit more of a, a visual of what we're looking at so we can see this pipe running down the back to the supercharger and we can then see now a little bit better we can see this pipe here is the one that's coming up from the supercharger we can see our wiring plug onto the uh, the air regulating flap this is how it's sitting in situ in the other video of this this is the actual unit from the other video we could see this was just with key on just switching the engine on the, sorry the ignition on we would see the flap just pulse and we'll do that again on this car this is my own personal car um, and it doesn't have an issue as far as I'm aware of at least um, with this uh, with this flap unit so we're just going to basically unplug this plug it onto this one and just show it again in its operation um, and how it's actually uh, defaulting basically and, and messing around 
um, I might take this apart in a later video and just see if I can uh, see if there's anything obvious inside if somehow it's some form of ingress or if there's obvious burning or something on the circuit boards or whatnot but we have to remember that this is not just a motor in here so there is a motor here there'll be plastic gears going up in here to drive from here to here to turn this flap as you can see we can hear the internals moving etc there's also um, a solid state control unit in here so this is actually a slave control unit inside of here off of the engine ECU which is the master so when I was referring to I believe it was a J808 um, ECU which if you look in the wiring diagrams for Volkswagen Audi it is inside of this unit um, so this is all one unit in itself um, hence why we've got also five wires going to the unit now what we'll do is we'll unplug this and plug in the um, the old unit and we'll just watch what it does but first we'll do a quick um, explanation of how we would go about replacing this part as you can see it is quite high up and accessible etc but we need to take off a lot of this stuff um, and a few hoses and stuff it isn't a hard job um, it's not a time consuming job either if you have the tools and like a selection of Torx 30 sockets um, it's not a hard job you just have to be careful you want a magnet as well because some of these screws are quite low down when I originally bought this car as per usual with a lot of used cars and people working on euros they don't have a clue what they're doing uh, a lot of some of these screws were actually missing because they're in places where you can easily drop them so what we've got to do so we've got to take this pipe off here as you can see two bolts on this clamp and then it simply lifts up I recommend doing all these screws because they're going into plastic driven by hand um, we'd have to remove this uh, hose or we would at least have to um, once we've unbolted here and pulled out the front of the turbo I believe there's an o-ring inside of here um, it's not an issue but once we pull it off we'd have to either leave this hose on and lay the pipe to one side or we would uh, have to take this hose off um that's no dramas we would have to obviously just unclip stuff like this we've got our uh, boost pressure sensor here that we'd unplug um we have got to obviously unplug our connector so it's just a usual vag wiring plug i've got um uh, other videos that show me how that show how to take these off quite simply it's going to be a squeeze it in and pull back scenario because we're trying to lift this tab inside of here this tab is actually lifting that we can see and it's coming off of that latch we've got obviously our hose clamp here hose clamp here our breather connection uh, we're probably because we're removing this we'll probably end up removing this breather uh, scenario as well there is five bolts holding this this inlet assembly on if you're going to remove the whole thing I've done this before um, where I've replaced uh, this unit with just removing this section and the intake remove that one and that one which is just that one bolt um, and then I believe there's another one down here just in front of that um, boost pipe taking those two off one two and then unscrewing all the three bolts that hold the assembly together and managing to slide it slide the unit out it makes it a little bit fiddly though just getting this pipe back into the uh, the whole assembly and whatnot um, but yeah I would probably advise take off the whole of this top section it is quite I say straightforward just a little time consuming well, like I said five bolts one bolt here one bolt down past the uh, the boost pipe just down here one bolt here that's three one bolt down here just where my finger is and then there was another bolt down here so once those three are off we can pop off our um, evap solenoid off of the intake just off that clamp we can unclip these hoses of course out of their mounts uh, and just obviously breathe this intake la 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 and once it's off it is simply just three bolts holding it on so it is something very doable like i say if you look down where that is actually located you'd almost want a um you'd almost want a screwdriver or, or a torx uh a t-handle or something very skinny to get down there um, like three eighth and half inch stuff that's not going to cut it quarter drive will work perfectly um, so if you've got a selection of uh, Torx um, uh, sockets you'll be fine with this job again like I said a bit driver down slipped into here 
to undo these bolts you could then do it in situ and just pull this off the side and not touch this unit here um, maybe it save you a little bit of a um, little bit of time and a little bit of uh, things to remove um, but it may just add to a little bit of hassle to the job um, like I say that's the way I do it or have done it in the past um, but it, it's just as quick just to remove this as I say it's just another three screws do it with a magnet when they're loose uh, and again do it by hand because they are going into a plastic in their manifold below um, so yeah that's pretty much all that we've got with regards to replacing it and obviously there is a basic setting that needs to be calibrated which we'll show at the end of this video um, I do have a, uh, a known good or sorry a new unit that I've got um, I've got some footage of one of those being calibrated with it I just plugged into the wiring so it will be sitting like this basically plugged in and you can watch it being calibrated on the VCDS um, where to calibrate it, how to do it on VCDS and watching the actual flap calibrate so what we'll do is we'll plug this one in and we'll, um, we'll simulate the fault like it was on the other car and so just you can see the, um, the way the unit actually reacts So it did have a little bit of a moment there, but there we go again. There we go. So that's that's similar to what it was doing, but not quite as dramatic. Um, but yeah, this this unit is um, internally defective. Like I say, I will try and pull it apart in a um, separate video. Um, believe they are actually somehow um, like either glued together or bonded together of some way um, as you can see I actually have taken the screws out a while back when I was um, originally planning on taking this part and seeing if there was anything inside of it that was obvious but so yeah it just gives you a bit more of an idea of what we're looking at this is the unit where we would re be replacing how to replace it with the five screws you need to take to lift this unit off an overview of the um, pipes and stuff that needs to come off don't replace the throttle body obviously it would be advisable to have this diagnosed by a professional we've got five wires that we're looking at here power and ground as being the the red with the green trace being the power um, and brown being the the earth uh, brown with a green trace um, I'd have to look on a wiring diagram to see what these are 100% um, but there's a lot of obviously uh, signal control going on this is his own solid state unit so all it needs is a power and a ground the rest is controlled on signal so whatever the ECU tells this slave units do it will do it and then pass pass that onto the motor which is in here driving the uh, the uh, the flap with uh, plastic plastic gears let's see if we can as luck would have it it's just not going to do exactly what it was doing in the last video but you get the idea that um, this was causing the the car not to um, to basically rev over 3000 if I recall and wouldn't make any power over 3000 if you drove it on the freeway motorway whatever you want to call it um, you basically uh, you got 3000 rpm and there was nothing you couldn't do any more you couldn't go any faster no matter what you did if you put your foot down it made no difference it is a small capacity engine aided massively by the turbocharger and the supercharger supercharger in the low end turbocharger more in the high end and you've got a bit of collaboration between the two um, and it's all revolving around this unit with the balance between the two and obviously the um, the control of the, the clutch on the water pump so this is a vital component um, there is a few fault codes you can have that may not even be this unit itself but it all relates to involving this unit so if you get circuit codes and stuff like that like i say you need to check the wiring this one is obvious in what it's doing um, and do a basic setting on the old unit if you want to take it off i took the last one off and i believe i was actually trying to do a basic setting on the unit try and do a basic setting if it won't do it um, that's also a telltale sign there might be something going on there's output tests that you can do on VCDS and any good scanner that, that's um, capable with Volkswagen Audi stuff 
Um, so try and do an output test, try and do basic setting. Um, output testing can be also called, called uh, final control in um, Volkswagen Audi language. Um, and yeah, if it doesn't work or if it works abnormally, as long as we've got our powers and grounds, obviously an oscilloscope would be brilliant to, uh, to scope these uh, signal wires, which I can also do at anyone's request on it in a further video. That would be quite advanced diagnostics though for, um, say, a DI wire and it wouldn't be something you would actually have access to but I can do it for anyone uh, for anyone's interest if there's any mechanics watching but yeah I think I'm going to wrap it up there um, if there's anything else you want to know or if you want me to do an actual detailed DIY and replacement of this unit I can do it okay, okay. so this is the engine you go under basic settings find your adaption for regulating flap for a compressor 